For the past 10 years or so, I've been uh, studying techniques for the privacy-preserving analysis of data. So suppose you're a curator and you've collected a large amount of uh, very sensitive data about people and you'd like to be able to release statistics about the population in your study while provably preserving the privacy of all of the people in the study. That's the kind of technology that we've developed. I think that um, one of the reasons that we've been successful scientifically is that we worked very hard to get a mathematically rigorous foundation for our notions of privacy and um, uh, to understand at a very deep level ways in which information can flow. Very surprising, very counterintuitive ways in which information can flow. And I believe that that kind of, in, uh, of understanding translated into examples that are easily accessible could be very uh, compelling and can have an impact on the discussion. There, there was uh, the uh, breaking of the anonymization of the Netflix prize trading data set that uh, woke up a lot of people to the fact that things that we consider completely innocuous and non-identifying, such as, say, a couple of movies that we've watched and when we watched them, turn out to be uh, quite identifying. And that has been picked up by um, some of the legal scholars community, such as Paul Ohm. And uh, it's, it's resonating with people, and it may well have an impact on legislation or policy. The public should care about privacy because a loss of privacy can and will translate into harms. And uh, there's a lot of discussion in the, in, in the legal community, in the legal scholar community, about what kinds of harms and how do you, uh, how do you make that message really clear.